Do you find booking appointments difficult over the phone with prospects? Have you ever had a prospect who you did book an appointment with who just didn't bother showing up to the appointment at all? What I want to talk about in our brief little video here today is I want to talk about how to maximize the number of appointments that you're able to book on the phone by having a great offer and making sure that the prospect isn't scared away from the appointment, the big, bad, scary real estate agent. And number two, I want to all but eliminate no shows from uh, even being a possibility in your real estate business. My name is James McDonald. It is my great pleasure to uh, help with these uh, small little videos on Agent Inner Circle. We offer a masterclass called Agent Lead to Close, and that's where all this great training is coming from. Agent Lead to Close specializes in converting leads to appointments and appointments into clients, which of course is the ball game in real estate. The more face-to-face -face appointments you have, the more conversations with prospects, the more business you're likely going to get as a result of that. But if you're not booking any appointments with buyers and sellers, I got a crystal ball that says you're probably not selling much in the way of real estate. So we got to fix that. But specifically, what I want to focus on is this. How do we make an offer to meet with a prospect where we don't scare the prospect away? Now, first of all, let's understand that if the appointment is not set within a reasonable period of time, it is very feasible that that appointment is not going to happen. I'll exaggerate to give you, uh, make the point. If I say, um, when would you like to meet? Or when would be a good time for us to get together? And my prospect says, well, how about um, three Saturdays uh, from now? Well, I'll tell you right now, three Saturdays from now, I'm going to be sitting here in my office um, waiting and they're not going to be showing up. On the other hand, if the appointment is, I, and I say, well, it's uh, 11 a.m., how about 12.30, and we book the appointment for an hour and a half from now, I assure you that appointment is far more likely to happen. It's almost a certainty because it's so close to right now. So what that demonstrates is this. The closer to now the appointment is set, the more likely it is that that appointment happens. So... If there was a way where we've got the prospect to agree to meet with us, they've accepted our offer, they've agreed to meet with us, how do we make it so that we book the appointment as close to now as opposed to allowing the prospect to drag their feet and book that appointment way off in the future? What we're not going to do is we're not going to leave it up to the prospect. We're not going to say, um, okay, well, when would be a convenient time for us to get together? and leave it open-ended. Because when the prospect responds with a time that's way, way too far out, you're going to say something like, well, I was thinking more like now. Well, it's like, well, why didn't you say so? So here's what we're going to do instead. What we're going to do is we're going to give the prospect options to make them feel like they're selecting the time, but we're going to corral them into a period of time that is within sort of 48 to 72 hours at the outside. So for example, it's a Thursday, let's say, and I say to my prospect, when would be a good time for us to get together? Do you have some time later on this evening or perhaps tomorrow or Saturday would be more convenient for you? Okay. Now, if this is Thursday and I've said this evening or perhaps tomorrow, Friday or Saturday, or I can say the weekend, would be more convenient to you. Now, to the prospect's ears and brain, it sounds like I've given them all of these options. The world is your oyster. Pick your time. But really, what I've done is I've said, when in the next two days, excluding today, when in the next three days are you available? That's what I've really said. I want to do this within the next three days, either today, tomorrow, or the next day. That's it. So when would be, now, but if I said it like that, it'd be like, well, you're kind of being a pushy salesperson, pushing me to meet with you. But when I say like, when would be a good time for us together? Do you have some time later on this afternoon or this evening? Or perhaps tomorrow or the weekend would be more convenient for you. To the prospect's brain, I have given them 
it's it balls in your court. You pick whatever top. But I'll tell you what you'll discover is overwhelming likeliness is with those options, the prospect will pick one. And whatever option they pick is perfectly fine. So they say, yeah, you know what? Probably Saturday would be better. Oh, that's great. What would be more convenient? Something in the morning before 11 or something after 11 into the afternoon. And all you're doing is you're corralling them. So they say, oh, before 11 is fine. Great. What's better? Nine or 10? After 11, probably be better. What would be better? Sort of 1130 noon or something later on closer to two. The prospect feels like they've picked the time, but you see, you've corralled them into a certain time to do the appointment. I'm only telling you this because it takes no more work. It doesn't cost any more money, but what will happen is you'll wind up booking an appointment that's much closer to now without going through all the rigmarole of you saying, well, I've got 1130 available and they say, yeah, I'm not available at 1130. Well, then where do you go? Well, I'm also available at 1030. Well, why didn't you say so then? If you're available at any time, then just say, right? So don't be playing these games of, I have a three o'clock available because they just say, well, I'm not available then. Now what do you do? Well, I also have this. It's like, they're thinking you're a joke. Okay. So be very conscious of that. Allow the prospect to feel like they're picking the time, but corral them into a time that's within a few hours. Okay. That's number one. Number two, when you're booking the appointment, you want to use verbiage that, number one, reiterates the benefit of the appointment. Okay, so I'm really looking forward to seeing you tomorrow and going over your criteria so we can accurately get you priority access to these great properties before they hit the internet, and in some cases, before they're even for sale. All I would ask is this. Should something come up on my end, which is highly unlikely, I assure you I will let you know immediately um, so that, you know, I, I'm, you're not showing up. Again, it's a very unlikely event. All I would ask that, should something come up on your end, would you mind extending the same courtesy to me? Um, I'm going to do a fair amount of preparation for our appointment, and I just want to make sure that we, we successfully get together. Would that be okay for me to ask of you? Okay. So I'm putting it on myself first. Number one, I'm reiterating the benefit of the appointment. Number two, for which you could sound something like this, in the unlikely event that something should come up on my end between now and our appointment on Saturday, I assure you I'll let you know so as to not inconvenience you. All I would ask is that because I'm going to do a fair amount of preparation for our appointment, that should something come up on your end as well, please make sure you do reach out to me and let me know um, as soon as you do. Would, would that be okay for me to ask of you? You know what the prospect will say? Of course I will. You've just eliminated no-shows. You've eliminated, and what you'll also discover is because it's so low pressure, what you'll likely discover is cancellations are reduced massively as well. All we're looking for is to make the prospect feel comfortable about showing up to the appointment, even though their molecules are telling them you're meeting with a salesperson, they're going to pressure you, they're going to they're going to push you into doing what you're not ready to do. So we want to use language that makes them feel like this is the opposite of that misconception. So again, this is a small little tidbit just in terms of booking appointments. There is a world of information to help you better convert prospects. And I would just leave you with this one suggestion. How much time, money, and resources do you put towards lead generation? Wouldn't it also be worthy of you to put a fraction of that energy and resources towards the lead conversion. Because if you're saying, oh, well, the leads aren't very good or the leads that I'm getting from here aren't very good or I can't reach them and all that, it's like, but wait a minute. You've dedicated all your money, resources, energy into generating the lead, but what you're doing with the leads is the problem. Our agent lead to close masterclass will solve all of this for you. It's pay as you play. It's really simple. Get more information. Go to agentleadtoclose.com. Check it out. If there's no contract. It's pay as you play. We will train you up. We'll coach you up on just this particular area of lead conversion to appointment so that wherever your source of leads are, I don't care if they're sphere of influence, open houses, running ads, online, offline, direct mail, whatever it might be, you need a system and process 
to better convert those leads to appointment. And once it's in place, whether it takes a month, two months, or six months to do that, you've got it forever and ever. You owe your leads, your hard-earned leads, you owe them that investment in treating those leads with the respect that they deserve. After all, they are the lifeblood of your business. That's where the commission checks are going to come from. So I strongly urge you to do that. In the meantime, if you're not already subscribed to Agent Inner Circle, do that right now. Uh, you probably are. That's why you're watching this video. And look forward to the next one next week. My great pleasure to do this. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a wonderful day.